Hey guys, it's me, Ken again. Today I'm bringing you a little review about my new little toy here, the K40 laser engraving machine, or laser cutter. I got this thing from eBay for like 380 bucks. Sure, I was a little bit concerned in the beginning when I placed my order regarding videos on YouTube where you guys ordered those units and they came with loose screws, completely messed up. Some of you got the machine without any laser tube even, or a power supply, but mine is fine. It came with all the accessories like uh, the fan and the uh, exhaust hose and this little water pump, um, the software and the USB doggle. So my machine came in the cardboard box. I saw that a lot of you got it in a wooden box. Um, I think that's because this particular unit comes from Germany. There's a supplier there who's selling them. When I opened up the box, everything was great actually. I mean, it was nicely packed, there was styrofoam around it, all the accessories were inside of this um, of the laser bed. Um, I set it up, uh, it took me about three hours. Um, I tried to install the software, which wasn't that easy on my computer because there was a kind of a conflict between uh, Coral Draw and I don't know what. So I installed the software on my laptop and it runs perfectly fine. It took me more or less two hours for um, the initial setup of the machine and about eight hours or something to install the plugins and the software. But um, that probably was the fault of my own computer, which is a little messed up. So I got myself a 20 liter plastic canister to put in the water. I used distilled water and I added some glycol which you can buy in Europe as an additive for heaters or heating systems in the house. In the States I think you get it as a special cooling liquid for boats or something. The power cord of the fan was an US power cord so it has the US connector. The seller guaranteed me that it is a European 220 volts version of this laser. So I hooked it up, the fan runs at a normal speed for my guess. The pump though is another thing, the pump runs much too quick because I think it might be designed for 110 volts. So after the first week it started making weird noises and I swapped it out with a local brand one. So before I will show you what kind of modifications I have made so far, I just want to show you this uh, little control panel. As you can see, this machine comes straight from NASA. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you have your main switch. Um, the laser switch activates the high power unit, which is in the power supply under this panel here. The test switch um, is a momentary switch to give you a little burst um, to see if your working material is nicely aligned with the laser to have the right starting point. The potentiometer, it says it's a 2 watt potentiometer um, meant to be regulating the output power of the laser indicated by this milliamp meter. Um, it goes to 30 milliamps. It says it's a 40 milliwatt laser, but you know, it's a Chinese brand, so I would say it's maybe like 25 or 30 watts. And I would say that on max your laser tube will have a lifespan of a month or something. So initially there was this milliamp meter built into this machine. After a week um, the needle got stuck somehow, uh, especially when you're engraving the needle goes nuts. So um, yeah, it just got stuck. It's not damaged, it still works, but I thought I'd just swap it out with a better one I got for like four bucks. Alright, let's talk about some little upgrades I made. I took out the original laser bed um, because there was a clamping device the size of a post couch which, which was pretty small so I put in this grid so I have the whole surface I can work with. Then the laser comes with this laser head or well it's a machine piece of aluminium so you have like three little pieces 
this is where the beam comes in this is where the mirror sits and the, it's you know so you have the laser coming in here goes down here into this bracket which is holding the head in place on this metal bracket here and then you have your lens in here I took everything out already so yeah that's about it it's very straightforward we're very very simple so the first thing I ordered um, uh, as a little uh, upgrade was this plastic or 3d printed air assist nozzle the thing is well they work though but the problem with those are if your laser beam isn't 100% centric uh, you will burn the nozzle so I had to cut off a little piece to make it fit again so at some point I decided to just swap out the whole head with another one from light object so this is another upgrade I made I bought a professional grade um, laser lens also from light object very nice um, quite expensive but it really improves the quality of your cut I have a little lamp here little LED lamp with batteries and magnets so you can put them anywhere which is nice sometimes I already put a little LED strip in here but sometimes you know when you have when you want to see if your cut got through it's nice to have an extra little lamp now this is a little cable chain another thing from a light object one by one by one centimeter I'm not sponsored or anything um, I'm just saying they have everything in one shop so it's pretty easy to get all the stuff in one go the cable chain is very nice when you add a air assist and a laser diode spritz bottle of water in case something like catches fire for the lens i have a little lens cleaner you should avoid touching the lens anyway but sometimes you have to clean it up that's what the air assist is for the air assist just blows in air in this little chamber here so it avoids the smoke getting onto the lens because the laser beam will burn in the smoke particles onto the lens. You should avoid that at any time. So that's why the air assist is for. Don't be confused when you see videos of uh, big laser cutters cutting steel or aluminium or whatever. They're using inert gases to avoid the laser from getting in touch with oxygen on the metal surface. This air assist is only for avoiding having smoke touching the lens or even when you have a big air pump to blow out this little flame popping up sometimes when you're cutting wood for example I actually suggest if you don't want to spend the money on an air assist take some steel wool and wash your pieces under running water dry them off with a hair dryer that works as well okay, what I find important is that you hook up all your components together to the main switch so I will never forget to put on the pump because running the laser without any additional cooling will destroy your tube right away so what I got is this little indicator showing you the water flow the thermometer um, is not calibrated I bought this thing for like two bucks on eBay and I can't manage to calibrate it somehow there's no potentiometer or whatever inside of it Maybe you guys can help me out, um, just let me know in the comments. And I have this active cooler out of a PC. I just got that from China, also from eBay, it's very cheap. I still don't know if it really makes sense. I would be happy to know how you guys are cooling your system. Okay, let's have a quick look in here. Main power supply, a little iPhone power supply where I hooked up a little LED strip inside of the laser chamber and some other things like the thermometer and the laser diode. Then here you have this little aquarium air pump for the air assist. I can't really say that I installed it because I just threw it in there. You just should take care because there is a fan to avoid to covering up the fan with anything so you have a nice airflow going on in there. These are like the two first pieces I have cut with my laser cutter and they are actually meant to improve my machine already because as you maybe know those fans they are very very wiggly and they don't really fit onto this machine I cut it out these little wooden sticks to fix down the fan so it got a tight fit 
So for me that worked with like a four millimeter piece of plywood and now the fan is nicely fixed. All right guys, this wraps it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and let me a comment below and excuse my bad English. I'm still improving it and I see you next time. Bye bye.